So, I'm pretty frustrated right now. I was working on a stop motion when, I don't know how, I don't know when, I accidentally deleted the entire thing. And let me just put that into perspective. I'm only really able to get like 30 seconds of footage a day, and this was like 4 minutes long, so that's like about a week of work gone in an instant. So I'm going to do what always cheers me up. I'm going to rant about something. Chances are you've probably heard that Doctor Strange 2 is out uh, now. Um, let's hope you've seen it because there's going to be some spoilers. So, was this a bad movie? Eh, no, not really. But I feel like it could have been better. Like, like a lot better. So, the alternate universe stuff in this is utilized very well. It definitely feels at home with a Doctor Strange movie. The movie mainly focuses around the idea of misusing power, and if one person deserves to control everything, and stuff like that. I thought they were going to refer back to whenever Doctor Strange tore a hole in the universe to help Spider-Man, and you know, have that be a big example of why one person can't control everything and he has too much power, but no, that's not in this at all. There were no consequences for that happening. Instead, their example of him misusing his power is whenever he gave the Time Stone to Big Mac Daddy so he could temporarily win and then they could come back and beat him later. But, I mean, he kinda had to do that, though. The whole Spider-Man incident is a much better example of misusing his powers. I was really excited to see Mordo returning as a villain in this one, but he doesn't because it's not the same Mordo. The whole reason he left Strange in the first movie is because he thought he was too powerful and didn't deserve all that power. So having him come back and be all like, Ah oh, yeah, this Spider-Man situation is proof why you don't deserve it, would have been perfect. But no, they didn't do that. They just had, like, a different Mordo that looked exactly like him and was also evil. I like the villain's motivation in this, and yeah, Wanda is pretty much the villain. She wants to steal her dead kids back from another universe so they can be together again. But like, you know, that won't work because you can't just replace people with copies. I still think her turning evil in the first place is kind of dumb. And there's one scene where she tries to possess a different universe version of herself, and I have no clue why, but the editing in this scene is the worst editing on the entire planet. The music is so out of place, and it does one of those, like, cartoon, like, black circle closed things that it's at the end of, like, like a cartoon, like, like, yeah, one of those. I don't know why. So the directors in this one wanted to make it a bit more horror-oriented, and, uh, yeah, it, it shows. Personally, I think the scariest scene is whenever Mr. Fantastic gets put into a paper shredder. It, it still keeps me up at night. This isn't exactly a criticism, but the whole Illuminati massacre scene, I saw like um, I saw that coming like a mile away. The whole, oh, we're super big and tough, nothing bad can happen to us, then immediately dies thing is, is getting kind of cliche. It wasn't like Rick and Morty. It was in Suicide Squad, it was in Invincible, it, it, it doesn't work as well anymore. In this movie, it's said that the main universe's serial number is Earth-616, which is what it was in the comics, but this makes no sense, because didn't Mysterio, back in Far From Home, say that the main universe was Earth-616, and he was lying about that? So... While on the topic of Spider-Man, I want to talk about No Way Home, and by talk about, I mean criticize. <laughs> it's kind of hard to be negative when you're in a theater surrounded by people cheering because Andrew Garfield is on screen again, but, you know, it's been a few months, 
the hype is worn off, I think I'm ready to, to, to criticize it now. Way back in Spider-Man Homecoming, Scorpion is like, ah, I want to know Spider-Man's identity so I can kill him! And then in Far From Home, the next movie, Mysterio is like, hey everyone, Spider-Man is Peter Parker. So you'd think, and so you'd think, the next logical option, have Scorpion hunt down Spider-Man and try to kill him, now that he knows his identity. Is that what happened? No! And now it never can happen, since everyone's memories got erased. A lot of people are pretty hyped about the possibility of a Spider-Man 4, but honestly, aside from Bruce Campbell as Mysterio, I really don't care. I'd much rather a continuation of the Amazing series, since we never got a proper conclusion on that one. Actually, speaking of Bruce Campbell, he was in Doctor Strange also, and he punched himself in the face for two weeks and somehow didn't die. Yeah, cause Sam Raimi and they do movies together and they did the Evil Dead. Anyway, that's all I have to say about the new Dr. Seuss movie. And, you know, honestly, for a Dr. Seuss movie, there really wasn't as much rhyming as I had expected. You'd think in a Dr. Seuss movie there'd be a lot more, a lot more rhyming. <laughs>